Welcome back to the NFA Review Channel, everyone. Today's suppressor is gonna be from CGS Group. This is their Helios 556 DT. So this is their direct thread 556 can. Uh, many of you will have an opportunity to hear this can in person at my fourth annual NFA review shoot on April 13th. Now that date sounds different to you. That's because it was going to be on March 2nd and due to political reasons, we had to push it back to April 13th. Uh, if you want an explanation rundown, head to my Facebook page, go to the events tab, you'll see the event. And once you're in there, go to discussion and you'll see the pen post explaining everything. But in any case, CGS Group and all the other manufacturers managed to change their schedules around and make sure they can still come out to demo all their products for you guys at my fourth annual NFA review shoot. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but in any case, let's go ahead and cover the specifications of the Helios in detail here in the studio. Then we'll pack up a rifle and head to the range and see what it sounds like. All right, starting from the top, the Helios comes in at an overall length of 6.375 inches, a diameter of 1.75 inches, and it weighs only 12.2 ounces. And that's mainly in part due to its construction. So this is constructed of 100% grade five titanium. So super lightweight, especially for a short, stubby, little fat 5.56 can. Now, as far as the finish, you probably noticed it has a really unique finish to it. And that's because this is a black DLC finish, so diamond-like coating. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit more expensive to produce. A lot of companies out there are mainly using high temperature Cerakote or anodization on aluminum cans. Uh, CGS Group went a little bit above and they wanted to provide a really high-end finish. Um, so it's not really like a matte finish. It's not a gloss. It's kind of in between. I would call it like a satin. It has a little bit of a sheen to it, but it is still pretty dull. And uh, I I've said this before about the Hyperion when I reviewed that. I really much prefer this finish to all the other ones. Uh, myself, I'm willing to pay a little bit more of a premium to get it in this finish. It's going to wear very well. Uh, you're not going to get any dull spots from the heat. And uh, it, just, it just looks better. That's pretty much all there is to it. And it kind of lets the weld lines from the tubeless design here kind of show through, which is really a really nice feature. Now that we're done with the specification rundown, let's go ahead and cover uh, some, some other notes on what makes this suppressor stand out before we go out and hit that range. So right off the top, you'll notice that the engraving for the suppressor is actually not ho like horizontally written down the tube of the suppressor, or in this case, tubeless suppressor. It's actually down here next to the mounting area. And if you look, from my angle, it looks like the threads and first or the threads stop right around here. So about halfway through the writing, and then you have a blast baffle right here. So this is going to be your safest area of the suppressor. So should something happen here and destroy the can, your serial number, your tube will be intact and CGS group will be able to make a repair without you losing your tax stamp and precious wait time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, while we are at the back of the can, another feature that I really like to see is the exposed wrench flats here. Uh, a lot of these direct thread stubby 556 cans will be flush mount. Uh, the problem with that is if it gets stuck or you want to tighten it on really well before you go shooting all day, uh, it's kind of impossible to do without a wrench strap. And as you know, you can't use a wrench strap when this thing's really heated up from a day of shooting. So this just adds an extra option for the end user, and I just prefer to have that on the back of my can. As far as the machining, it looks like Josh just had some fun machining some lightweight areas, so removing material here to keep it lighter, as well as a standoff area on the front of the can. Now, when they went to go design this can, their main features that they wanted to implement into the Helios was sound suppression, flash mitigation, and minimal and repeatable point of impact shift. Now that last one's very important. There's nothing more annoying than knowing your can has a little minimal shift, but not being able to repeat it as you switch the can between hosts. So being able to put this on a rifle, set my optic, and then know where I need to adjust it when I take it off is a huge plus to me. So 
uh, very, very much a precision manufactured can to keep all of those tolerance and all those stacking issues to a complete minimum so the end user doesn't have any uh, problems down the road. Another neat feature that I actually didn't even know about uh, until about an hour ago was that they actually treat the, the internals of the suppressor with a proprietary process and the coating's called S-Line. Uh, now they wouldn't divulge how it's applied but it is applied in a low temperature fashion so as not to change any characteristics of the metal itself. And it basically acts as a high temperature protection and high lubricity coating on the, on the inner uh, baffle stack of the suppressor. So again, you don't need to take a rifle can apart to service it because of the high pressures and heat inherent with shooting those type of cartridges on the can like this. So that's why I'm not showing you the inside of this can because I can't, it's sealed, and there's no reason to break open a rifle can. The only reason you would need to break open a rifle can is if it's designed by the manufacturer to be used on pistol calibers as well, because those won't burn as clean as the hotter, higher pressure cartridges used in rifles. Um, but in addition to the high heat and uh, pressure buildup inside a can like this, that would normally blow out all the carbon, they have that coating. So now, kind of like a Teflon, nothing's gonna stick to the inside of this can, if that makes any sense. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think that about covers it for the studio today, guys. It is a really simple looking can, very clean. Uh, it does have some cool machining for those of you that are into that. Myself, I prefer just a straight uh, flat can, but I'm sure that this uh, does have something to do with function and sound and flash as well. Um, I am not a suppressor engineer or designer. I just get to shoot them all the time. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hit the range. I think we spent plenty of time today in the studio. I'm going to grab one of my rifles and we're going to go see how it does. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's review so far. The Helios definitely performed as advertised, uh, more so than its incredible suppression was its flash mitigation. 
Um, <laughs> this thing was throwing quite the fireball with no flash hider on here and this can pretty much contained all of it. Now you, you might have seen, I don't know, I haven't reviewed the footage yet, you might have seen some striking, uh, some sparking out the front of the suppressor. That's something that's inherent with 100% titanium cans, so titanium cans do spark a little bit. Uh, as far as the suppression, did great. Uh, I did not check the point of impact shift. Uh, scientifically you know in between takes when we were shooting the steel at 100 yards without the can and with the can I mean we were hitting an IDPA size target standing at 100 yards not even trying hard I don't know if it shifted if it did we're talking inches um, so I did not test that sorry about that now as far as the suppression we'll go back to that I had a Patreon meetup between when I had time to film the studio scenes and today. So on March 2nd, the original date for my shoot, I ended up setting up a Patreon meetup at Reload Range in Tarpon Springs, Florida. So about 15 of my gold member patrons came out and we had a really good time. I brought some full auto guns out. You can check my Instagram account if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, but what I did do is bring the Helios. Now up until that point, I hadn't shot it yet. I believe Jacob Broad was the first person to shoot it. I didn't even shoot it. Um, and I wanted to do that to kind of get their feedback on it. I thought it'd be a really neat thing to do. And so I have a view, a viewpoint of a larger sample size. And what we all pretty much came to the conclusion of is it had very minimal back pressure and the suppression was excellent, especially considering we were basically shooting in a steel box at an indoor range. Um, now this bore aperture again is larger than most 5.56 cans and that definitely led to less gas in the face and no overrunning of the gas system in the gun. We were looking at the ejection pattern of the brass on the range and I mean we shot multiple brands of 5.56, multiple brands of 2.23 and everything was pretty consistent. Uh, a couple of us did get a little gas underneath our right eye and I pretty much contributed that to being indoors and not having a slight breeze kind of wafted away. I mean, it wasn't like a high pressure, you know, where your eyes start to really water and sting. Um, and out here on the range, we do have a slight breeze today. It's nothing like we normally have, but no discomfort all day, especially when I was doing those rapid fire moves. I didn't get any gas buildup underneath my right eye or my nose. And I shoot pretty close to the charging handle. So uh, I hope more companies start to do this um, I know suppression will suffer a little bit when you widen the bore aperture, but CGS Group managed to do both. So hopefully more can follow suit down the road. Uh, one thing to definitely take note of with the direct thread can is it's going to loosen on you. I had to tighten it between each scene. It wasn't doing a full rotation, it was more of a quarter to a half turn. So it's just something to take note of. Make sure you bring some type of gloves or a Coltec pouch to put on there and just give it a quick snug in between mag dumps. Uh, but, you know, bore aperture is a little wider, so you shouldn't have any baffle strike issues should you forget. Um, so yeah, um, I, you know, for 2019, I really, really wanted to find something to nick each item on, you know, something to complain about. But it's really hard when most of the companies that you work with are, they're good at what they do, they've been doing it a long time, and they spend a lot of time R&Ding it to perfect the product before they release it. So it's hard for me to sit here and find something to fault. Uh, I guess the one thing I would fault is that it comes loose after a couple of rounds, which is of no fault of theirs, it's just a direct thread thing. Uh, but, so yeah, that's about it for the review, guys. Um, again, so far so good on the April 13th shoot. If you want to come out, they will have this suppressor out there, and knowing CGS Group, they're probably going to give one away. Uh, so make sure you go RSVP for the shoot on April 13th. And we are about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Um, I'm going to start reaching out to some uh, companies that I work with and see if we can put together a really cool grand prize and give it away to my gold members on Patreon when I hit 100,000 followers. So thank you everybody who have subscribed on Facebook, followed on Instagram, and of course supported on Patreon and have come out to the shoots to demo these things in person to get a better idea of what it sounds like before you make a purchase decision. Until next time, click those buttons. I have a lot more reviews coming and a lot more giveaways. See you guys.